Alright, so as a photographer, you've probably heard of the term RGB curves at least once. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with what they are, that's exactly what we're going to be working on today. We're going to be talking about how you can use RGB curves to touch up your photos and how to use them easily and quickly and not overcomplicate things. So without further ado, if you follow me over here to the computer, we will get into the tutorial. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is open up Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom. Either one works. They both have RGB curves, so it's not a problem which one you use. I'm personally going to be using Photoshop because I find the RGB curves a lot easier to manipulate in Photoshop, but you can do the exact same thing in Lightroom. So the first thing you're going to do is open up a photo. So we're going to go to one of my shoots here. Um, let's go with this one. We'll find a photo that we like. Still looking for a good photo. Alright, so I have found the image that I want to use for this particular example. Now when you open the photo, you'll be greeted by Camera Raw. I already adjusted some of the settings here, and what you pick uh, for the Camera Raw isn't particularly important since we're focusing on the RGB curves. So I'm going to go ahead and just open the image. Uh, you can open it as is, or you can mess around in Camera Raw. So to get RGB curves, you're going to go over to your Adjustments panel right here, and you're going to select Curves right and this will open up your RGB curves now I'm gonna go ahead and drag it over here and expand it so that you can you know get a better better visual of what's going on here so what you have to understand with RGB curves is that you are adding and subtracting light basically is the, the simplest way if I do this you're subtracting if I do this I'm adding and where you add and subtract is basically what this diagonal line is if you're over here this is the shadows if you're over here this is the highlights and if you're here this is the mids so if I subtract light from the shadows, it's going to get darker. If I add light to the highlights, it's going to get brighter. Essentially, I'm increasing the contrast. As you can see, deeper shadows, brighter highlights. Now, obviously this is too much of a contrast for this uh, particular photo, but you understand the idea. And the same thing can be said about the mids. I can add and subtract light from the mids, which has a very dramatic effect. This is something that you might want to affect subtly but that is how that works. Now, if I come over here and I click this top part, this will bring a drop down of R, G, and B, your three colors. Now, if you go into red, it works the same way. I am subtracting light from the red spectrum in the shadows. I am adding light to the red spectrum in the shadows. Now, this is a little more complicated because when you think of subtracting light, you think of light as almost not having a color, but basically we're subtracting the red light. And what happens is when you subtract the red light, it brings in the opposite, which is cyan. And that is this nice sort of tealish blue color that you see coming in. If I add red, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. And the same thing happens in the highlights. If I subtract red from the highlights, I get cyan. If I add red, I, I add red. And um, that is the same for every single color in the spectrum green if i subtract green it'll it'll give me um this is like a magenta a purplish violet color if i add it i add green if i subtract from the highlights same thing as the red same thing as the red so we're adding and we're subtracting light from our image and with the blue you get yellow blue same thing yellow blue now where people usually go wrong with rgb curves is they try to overthink it now think about a painting if you want orange, you're going to add red and yellow. Red and yellow creates orange. So to demonstrate this, if I add red and I add yellow, which is subtracting blue, guess what? I have orange. Now what people try to, they try to overthink it and they're like, okay, well I have to subtract this to get cyan and then blah, 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 and then do all this. But don't think about it that way. Think about it as if you have a color palette, as if you are painting. And if you think about it as if you're painting, it's a lot, lot easier to come up with the colors that you want. If you want purple, for example, you add red and blue. So we'll add red, we'll add blue. Guess what? You get purple. Now, you also have to take into account how this is affecting the light because if you want contrast, you're going to have to subtract. So there's two different ways to get the colors you want. You can either add or subtract. Thankfully, we have a green spectrum. And if you subtract green, guess what you're left with? Red and blue, which is purple. So you have to also understand that you can subtract in certain situations where it applies. Because if I'm taking out the green, I'm leaving red and blue. And that leaves me with purple because red mixed with blue is purple. And I don't have as much green to balance that out. So we're going to start toning this image using those principles. Now, for this particular image, I want to have purpley blue shadows with 
yellowish highlights, right? That's that's a nice, nice complimentary purple yellow. I don't want to go too far on the purple because I find purple yellow gives it sort of an unrealistic look, but if we keep some blue in there, it'll look very nice. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull down the reds, and that's because I don't want a lot of reds in this image. I like this sort of cyan color in the shadows. It's very nice. Now to balance this out, I'm going to add some red to the highlights. And the reason why I'm doing this not only is to create contrast, but also because it just makes the colors pop a lot more. And we're going to go over to green and I'm going to bring down green. And this, you have to have selective vision is what I like to call it. Do not look at the image as a whole because you're going to confuse yourself, right? The, the biggest problem with working with RGB curves is being able to not see everything as a whole because obviously this looks really sort of messed up and it's very hard to tell how your tones are going to come out. Look at what you are affecting. When I'm moving this, I'm adjusting the shadows. Now, because I'm adjusting the shadows, I'm going to want to look at this area. I'm going to want to look at this area. I'm going to want to look at areas in the picture that are not the face, that are not the sh the mid-tones, that are not anything except the shadows. And the reason why is because I'm not going to get a good idea of what the color is going to be if I'm looking at the image as a whole. If I'm looking at her hair, which has a lot of shadow, I'll be able to get a better idea of how much purple I want to add. So I'm going to drag this down to about here. And now we're going to add some green in. And again, now we're going to look at the highlights. We're not going to look at the shadows. I think this is a very good amount of green. Kind of makes her skin pop in the highlights right there, which is exactly what we want. But I'm still keeping enough red in the photo that the, sh the mi sort of mid-tones of her skin look very pleasing. Now, we're going to move over to blue. Now, like I said, I wanted a lot of blue in the image. So I'm not going to bring down the blue as much. I'm going to bring it down until the hair looks good. And we're only going to bo boost the blues a little bit. Now, as you can see, we have a nice sort of bluish yellow. You can see it's got that yellowish tint. And you can click the eye to enable and disable curves. And already, as you can see, we've created a lot of contrast. Now, the reason why that contrast is coming in is because we're pulling and boosting the highlights. It's exactly what we were doing in RGB as a whole, because RGB affects all colors at once. And if you're affecting all the colors at once, you're going to essentially be changing the light as a whole. Because I did, I increased the, as you can see here, I increased the contrast of them individually. It also increased the contrast of the photo. Now, what you can do in RGB is adjust the shadow clipping. You can adjust the highlight clipping, which is essentially how dark the shadows are and how bright the highlights are, like what the brightest highlights color is. So what I'm going to do is boost the shadows just a little bit like that and then bring this back down to sort of correct it. And I'm going to add a little bit of oomph to the highlights and squash the highlights just a little bit. And the reason I do this is just to give it that sort of filmy, filmy look. In fact, I actually don't want that much shadow. So there we go. As you can see, that was very simple. It was very quick and we easily and quickly corrected a photo using curves and we got a pretty fantastic result. I really like how the toning is in this image. Hopefully this lesson was easy for you guys to follow. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to see more content like this because I'm definitely going to be making more videos just like this one. So that's it for this one, guys. Stay tuned for more.